Hey everybody, I'm Rob Freeman and welcome back to Securing the Built Environment. This is episode 147 and in this episode we are talking about how to prevent session hijacking. And in this video we're going to talk about three things. Uh, number one, what is session hijacking? Number two, how does session hijacking happen? And number three, how can you protect yourself against session hijacking to keep your data safe and uh, reduce the risk that you will become a victim of some sort of a phishing attack or uh, just end up with your data or being a victim of a cyber crime. So yeah, so what is session hijacking? So session hijacking is a type of cyber attack that happens when a malicious actor, a hacker, gains access to a session ID uh, or a cookie or some other authentication token that a website or a web application, you know, like a highly valuable website or a web application for your bank or for a crypto um, exchange like Coinbase or Gemini or really anything. It could be your office software. It could be um, really anything that is a valuable piece of uh, software or a web application or website that is using a session ID to authenticate you when you're going to log in. I mean, honestly, it really it could be eBay. It could be just your Google account. Because um, all these websites use uh, some sort of way to authenticate who you are when you're logging into them. And the way that this happens is the result of uh, the way the internet was built and uh, the protocols that it uses. So um, HTTP, which is Hypertext Transfer Protocol, uh, is what's called a stateless system or sa stateless network, uh, stateless protocol. And what stateless means is that it just that that protocol itself is not designed to keep track of data. It uh, registers every session uh, with a user as a unique thing, uh, but it doesn't track the sessions themselves. And same thing with HTTPS. So uh, HTTPS is just Hypertext Transfer Protocol Secure, and that's what is pretty much used on every website today. Uh, Google, I, I don't even think will really rank you unless you have a website that uses HTTPS. Um, and so to get around the fact that it was stateless, websites and web apps had to figure out a way to track and authenticate you. And so what they did was they created, uh, they started something, they started use, using things like cookies. Cookies are just session tokens that keep track of who you are and keep uh, identifying information in them. And they, you know, they use cookies, they could use authentication tokens, session IDs, and those are all um, stored somewhere. And um, and sometimes they can pass from the website to a web server or through the browser uh, in an open way. And if you're using a, uh, a public Wi-Fi network or your, um, your security uh, habits are not really uh, safe, you could uh, be opening up those session cookies or session IDs to snooping. And that brings us to the second thing, which is how does session hijacking happen? So session hijacking happens most often, I would say, in what's called a uh, sniffing attack, where they, uh, somebody's using a public Wi-Fi network and they, you know, so say you're at, you know, the library or a public park or, even a Starbucks and you're using a public Wi-Fi network and somebody else is in that network on the same network and they are uh, using what's called a packet sniffer. And a packet sniffer is just a tool that's used to, to analyze data on that network and identify and, and view packets that are passing through it if they're not encrypted. And it can also identify devices on the network and um, Packet sniffers are widely available. Uh, they're free. Some of them are free. Uh, Wireshark is one that's very popular. One's called another one's called TCP Dump. It's another one. And um, anyway, uh, what wire what uh, packet sniffers are used for is 
basically tracking data that's passing through an unencrypted network open, and they can intercept that data, which could be your packet, uh, excuse me, your, um, your user ID, your cookies, or your session tokens, and then they can intercept that data and maybe um, use it later, uh, take the cookie and try to spoof your account and get into an, an, account, an account using that data, or they can uh, alter it and use it in an attack, like a phishing attack, to try to get into your accounts, um, pretending that to be you, basically. And um, so, how do you protect yourself against session hijacking? Well, the simplest way to protect yourself is to use a system that is going to encrypt your activity online. And the simplest, one of the simplest ways to do that, especially if you're an Apple user, is to use the iCloud Private Relay system, which is free iCloud Private Relay. I did a video about it a few weeks ago. I'll link to it uh, below in this article here. Um, iCloud Private Relay is part of iCloud service and or the premium service for iCloud. And it will encrypt your data and hide your IP address so that uh, people who are on the network can't see what you're doing. And I think Apple is also not able to see what you're doing. Same thing with a VPN, a virtual private network. There are lots of VPNs out there and a VPN will uh, encrypt your use of your, uh, encrypt your activity your acti while, while using that VPN. So it'll encrypt your IP address so the hackers can't identify your machine or where you are. It will encrypt your session IDs and your cookies so they can't view those as well. And um, so that's a really simple way to, um, you know, help protect yourself against session hijacking. Um, another thing that is not really spoken about too, too often is to clear your cookies regularly. So cookies are um, usually, sometimes they're persistent. And so they will, you, you'll use a cookie and then you'll come back to the website later uh, and we'll use the same cookie to, uh, keep your session open to keep it active and if that cookie uh, is available to a hacker who's using a packet sniffer and they get a hold of that cookie they could spoof your account and gain access to your system using that active cookie a way around that is to either delete your cookies regularly or use what's called one-time cookies uh, which i think you know, some companies are moving to, which use a, a unique hash. Every time, a, every time a session is created, they use a new new cookie. So the cookies are not persistent; they only last per session. And um, you know, a hacker could, in theory, uh, do what's called a man in the middle attack, where they are basically um, intercepting everything that you're doing actively within that website, and then they're you know altering the data that you're using to communicate with that website in real time. Um, but I think that's a little less common than a passive hacking, uh, passive session hijacking attack where they would just be trying to grab a cookie or a session ID and then use it later. So, um, yeah, those are good, you know, sort of good ways, simple ways to reduce the risk of a session hijacking is to use iCloud Private Relay or use a VPN. Uh, obviously, also just to keep yourself safe with authentication, use multi-factor authentication when logging on to websites and strong passwords and try to clear your cookies on a regular basis. Keep your software updated, things like that. Uh, yeah, so anyway, so this is, um, hope this has been helpful. Just wanted to, to walk you through some um, of the risks of what's called a session hijacking attack and how you can keep yourself safe and um, not be a victim of a session hijacking attack. Uh, I guess one other thing I should just mention quickly is that um, when, when evaluating VPN services, like if you don't have access to iCloud Private Relay, um, VPNs are, there's a ton of VPNs out there. And uh, the one that I use occasionally is called WireGuard. WireGuard is, uh, has gotten really good reviews um, from a variety of VPN um evaluators and it's it's a good service they there are sometimes you can find coupons uh 
where it's very inexpensive um, to buy like a subscription for a few years at a time. And so that's a good VPN service, but there are other VPN services that are also good. Like I think Proton is very good. Um, but there are also VPNs out there that are free, that don't charge anything for them. And so you might be tempted to use a free VPN, but I think you should always, I mean, about, I, I always wonder like how these free services keep them, keep the lights on. How, do, how, how does a company that's not charging you anything stay in business? Well, they must have some business model. And if that business model is not to charge you money for the use of their service, then you should just be wondering whether you yourself are the product. And, you know, it's sort of like classic, um, you know, meme almost. Like if you're, if you're not paying for the product, you are the product. So um, anyway, thanks for watching. I hope this is helpful. And uh, if you feel like you need to reach out, uh, please feel free to do so. Thanks again and have a great day.